Good evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. I'm the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. Previously, I was a financial analyst and a financial journalist. I've also been a research engineer in telecommunications and filed several patents. Tonight, I'd like to speak to you about the situation in Libya. <clears throat> For the first time since the death of Gaddafi in October 2011, the domination of Libyan life by the religious fundamentalists funded and armed by the United States, NATO, and Qatar, and Saudi Arabia has been challenged. <clears throat> A Mr. Khalifa Belkasim Haftar has launched a series of attacks to rid Libya of Islamic fundamentalism, at least that's what he purports. <clears throat> now, if you're interested in finding out more information about this, one way to do it is to simply grab his name, copy it, and then set up a, a Google uh, News account that defaults to Arabic, as I've done here, and put his name in and search and then use the translate function because it's very difficult to get much information about this uh, unless you get some detail. So you can see some of the information we're getting here. So let's uh, take a look at what's going on uh, in brief. <clears throat> so what do you need to know? This is a very complicated situation. So First of all, we should look at a map. So what we have here is a map of Libya. <clears throat> um, now, the forces that are supporting Haftar's uh, Libyan National Army, which is ironically actually a militia, as it's called, um, in that it isn't officially the army of Libya, it is uh, his forces, these come uh, are largely based in Cyrenaica presently, and they are allied uh, with uh, the people of Zintan, which are over here uh, near Yafran on this map. Um, so uh, Tobruk has uh, announced that it's behind Haftar by and large, although not in its entirety. His press conference was in Al Baida. Four hundred officers were rumored to be likely to be. Um, uh, fired uh, by the Libyan government, so that certainly motivated them to move. Um, the Air Force is largely behind Haftar. Now the key uh, forces aligned against him are the, is the city-state of Mizrata, which is largely funded by Qatar, which represents the Islamists. Um, Mizrata has a long feud with Bani Walid, which is the uh, capital of the largest uh, tribe in Libya, the Warfala. Uh, so Bani Walid will be waiting for the signals to rise up. Um, the, uh, there was, uh, of course, as most of you know who would follow this, there was aircraft and uh, deployed in the attack against the Islamic extremists, as they're called, in Benghazi. Of course, this is an oversimplification. The groups attacked were February 17th Brigade, Ansar al-Sharia, the group that is responsible for the attack on uh, Chris Stevens, the American ambassador. Uh, and the key group that he's going to have to take on is the Libya Shield, which is actually uh, a large group of militias with four different uh, regions of control, east, west, south, and north, uh, numbering close to 100,000 uh, people. Um, now, uh, to just briefly go over who is allied with uh, Kaftar, because that's the purpose of this uh, presentation. So, um, Zintan, uh, uh, the city of Zintan and the, and the tribe of the Zintan uh, also hold Saif al-Islam al-Gaddafi. Um, Egypt's military government may be interested because uh, the group that they're aligned uh, uh, against would be the uh, allies of the Muslim Brotherhood, and Egypt's uh, military government is opposed to the Muslim Brotherhood. So here's an article I have about that. Uh, the al Qaqa and Sawak militias, um, loyalists, uh, because uh, if there have been articles in the Arab uh, news that indicate that um, 
there are people who are protesting the exclusion law, which is a law that banned anyone who had been involved in the government prior to the um, uh, NATO invasion slash uprising slash revolution slash uh, uh, civil war uh, slash uh, state destabilization um, have been banned from office and uh, and they've been getting killed one a day. So um, as I can quote here, but he's widely supported by former soldiers from the Gaddafi regime shortly after the dictator's fall and death in October 2011. Around 150 officers and NCOs tried to name him the new chief of staff, although the National Transition Council never officially recognized the move. The uh, elite groups of uh, 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 paratroopers and commandos, the al Saika forces, also uh, have units that have uh, uh, participated in uh, the attacks by Haftar. Um, and that's uh, then also there's a group called uh, by a guy named Ib Ibrahim Jadran of the Sirnaka Defense Force. So these are some of the groups that are behind Haftar. So uh, this is an important time in the history of the um, you know massacre of Libya, uh, and everyone has a role to play. And uh, since Haftar is essentially protecting uh, the uh, socialists uh, in part and trying to restore something like civilized. Uh, rule of life. I'm inclined to consider this extremely good news, although he is a, a CIA man. So the interesting part about this is uh, the U.S. has been silent about it. So clearly, they are that silence is acquiescence, and this will help Hillary Clinton, who I deeply oppose, win the White House. Because if Libya can be shown to be functioning, it will reduce greatly the uh, target area on her. Uh, for having destroyed that country through failing to uh, use diplomacy and instead use bombing and unleash hell on Africa and the world. That's my brief update for now. My name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck.